Hey everybody, how's it going? I am here at the Tatchby Depot Museum with my buddy Doug Pickard here and we are going to go over some of the internal workings of some of these uh, vintage signals that came from the Bill Stoko collection. Doug's going to operate them and I'm going to show how they work inside. Uh, I'm not going to be able to explain a lot of the stuff. I'll just show it to you while it works because I never worked with most of this stuff. But anyhow, uh, been wanting to do this for a while. Doug and I have been talking about it for about a year and now it's time to stop talking and start doing. So here we go. Okay, this is the control shack that runs everything. Uh, this board over here runs the stuff on the uh, east side and that board runs all the signals on the west side. Who, who wired all this? Who put all this together? The man who used to live in Tehachapi, who now lives in Montana, by the name of Jim Jury. He was a worked for the telephone company all his life, and he does beautiful wiring. Obviously. Uh, yeah, beautiful wiring. Awesome. So this is what makes all of that stuff work. And uh, beautiful job. All right, this is the... Uh, GRS Model 2A semaphore dwarf signal. This came from Grand Central Station in New York. And uh, I don't know how Bill acquired this, and doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, in the early days, the reason this has the semaphore blade on it is that in the early days of electric lights, the electric lights weren't very bright. They worked fine at night, but during the day, they were still hard to see, so they left the blades on them, the semaphore blade on it, okay? There we go. And that is, as you can see, going to the green position. Back to yellow. And back to red. All right, let's go around back and see what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, you have the uh, 110 volt DC motor here that operates it. The motor has a pinion gear on it that operates this big gear here and then you have the contact assemblies that stop that, that power the motor and open when it needs to stop see everything it's very simple not a lot of moving parts the red you can see that you have a, just a pause for those you don't under, know about DC motors a lot of people do pause it in a negative wire and you just reverse the polarity one to go green one to go uh, one polarity to go green and a reverse polarity to go yellow you can see the contact assemblies here they go to an open spot there to stop it way to catch it going down all right GRS semaphore dwarf signal all right this is the GRS searchlight signal here and uh, you can see that right now it's red and goes to yellow and to green and back to red. All right, let's go behind there and let's see how this thing looks inside. Okay. Let's open it back up here. And you don't want to shock yourself. Yeah. Pull that out. And you can see there the light and you have the polar relay here and you have your roundels here and they move based on polarity or being de-energized if it's de-energized it's in the red position because there's a counterweight at the bottom of that that keeps it in the center position normal polarity will give you a green and then reverse polarity will give you a yellow. 
and then de-energize, it goes to red. This is a 12 volt DC setup, straight, simple, easy, easy peasy. All right, that is how the GRS searchlight works, and it does the exact same thing as the union switch and signal search lights, so I'm not gonna go up there and do those. Thankfully, this one is at ground level. All right, this is a magnetic signal company, upright, wigwag, the early type, used for crossing warning protection. And I have never worked with one of these, so I can't explain a lot of it other than it's just a straight DC motor. You can see the coils up there. Contacts there that open as it goes by. Opens and closes the contact. Every time it opens the contact, the counterweight here goes back to the bottom. And then it uh, re-energizes when it goes the other way. And then the clapper for the gong is just mounted directly to that uh, shaft right there, inside the bell. That is heavy duty. I don't know what one of those ways, but I'm glad I never had to work with them. All right, this is the peach basket, uh, wigwag. Probably works the same way inside, but uh, we'll check it out anyway. What the heck? All right, yeah, it uh, works the same way, but uh, got a little more oomph to it, it looks like. Works a little faster. All right, peach basket wigwag. All right, this is the Griswold. Rotating banner type crossing warning system. And all right, let's go see what it looks like inside. All right, not much in here. Got a DC motor, a counterweight. That's what rotates the banner, and that is really the only moving parts in here. I hope that comes out. It's really dark in there. <laughs> All right, Griswold rotating banner. Let's go take a look at the gong. You can see there how these coils create this energy for the armature. The gong inside, you can't see the gong. It's it's the the bell is bolted on and it'd be a real pain to take it off. But anyway, that's that's how that works. It energizes, then de-energizes, energize, and then when it hits the opens the contact, it de-energizes and it just keeps banging the clapper inside the gong back and forth. Alright. And electric. I might add real quickly that although that is a Griswold crossing system, that is a union switch and signal cast iron gong. Okay, this is the union switch and signal, lower quadrant semaphore signal. This is an approach, an intermediate approach signal. And that would have been its approach position. All right, let's go in and uh, let's go in and see what it looks like while it's working. All right, this is inside the mechanism. These are the mechanisms for the uh, union switch and signal. Lower quad quadrant style bees. You can see as, it, as the chain moves, it has the, those little pieces on there that hook those arms and carry it up, get to a certain place, and it locks that in. Now you can see the other one doing the same thing. Carried up on that chain, and those rods go up the mast, 
and attach to those signals. As it goes down, you can see these canisters here. Those are air buffers and they keep the uh, blades from just slamming down because those are pretty heavy. So they just buffer the movement on the way down. One more time watching those go up just because it's so cool. See now the block will come around for the other one and lift that one up. I always marvel at the engineering that went into uh, a lot of this stuff. It's almost some of it's almost uh, Rube Goldbergish. Cool. And I did have to pick my friend John McIntyre's brain to get some of this stuff straight because I know virtually nothing about how semaphores work. All right, this is a union switching signal type T2 upper quadrant semaphore and upper quadrant means that it only had a signal or a semaphore at the top of the mast whereas that one over there with two signals while it gave us similar information it uh, operated a little differently this one being just an upper quadrant didn't have to worry about interfering it didn't have to worry about the blades interfering with each other with that one over there the blades dropped to the bottom so they didn't interfere with each other here they don't need to do that so you have the three position horizontal is red 45 degrees is yellow and 90 degrees up is uh, green <laughs> and uh, again this was an intermediate signal designated by the numbers on the mass that would have been the mile post the miles from San Francisco this was out in Arizona somewhere uh, also something that uh, Doug mentioned is that we have a color and position signals. This is a color and a position signal. You can see it displays a color and a position. Then you have this signal over here, which we'll look at in a minute, that displays only white lights, and that is a position only. This one displays all the colors. It is a color only. All right, let's go open the mechanism of this and see how it looks. All right, you're not going to be able to see a lot of the stuff. This is just the DC motor here at the top and the contact assembly at the bottom. You can see that it's rotating upwards right now. Yeah, not a lot to actually see in here. This one doesn't work the same. As the old style B, which you can see how the contacts open and close for each position. And all the cool stuff is behind that black cover there. And I am not going to disassemble this signal. All right, union switching signal, type T2. Okay. All right, this is a general signals, or general railway signals, GRS, upper quadrant, semaphore, a type two. And uh, we will cruise on over there and look in the, uh, see how it works inside. All right, it is in the down position now. This one has a big DC motor on it. it 
pinion on the front of it. Reduction gears up there. You can see that that chain is hooked to a rod that goes up the mast. You can see that that's a small rod compared to the big heavy duty ones that were on the union switch and signal type. Okay, this one doesn't have buffers like the uh, union switch and signal. I don't know because I don't have prints for this, circuit plans, but it looks like it just uses uh, maybe a, a, on the DC motor, they probably has through a series of contacts. One more time, you can see how these contacts here open and close to do whatever it is they are designed to do. Like I said, I don't have any circuit plans for this, so I don't know. But I'm assuming that as it goes down, it uses the motor for dynamic braking, reverse the polarity on it, and then buffers it at the bottom with a resistor. That is an assumption. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below. All right. A GRS Type 2 Semaphore Mac. I had to redo this one because I had it wrong. This is slow clear. That one is approach. That one is restricting. And that signal, well, there's clear again. Slow clear, and that is stop. And that is a uh, union switch and signal. This came off the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad. There are no moving parts in this, so we're not going to get into the back of it. I just wanted to show you a position only. All right, this is a uh, union switch and signal. Color light, three color. This was a dwarf signal. It's sort of been used in uh, low or, or small narrow clearance areas. You can see the... Uh, Red signal at stop on the bottom that was there, and oh, it's like the green bulbs burn out. Yep, looks like the greens burn out, but this is a but anyway, that's what a color light signal looks like the color only. All right, all right, before I get out of here today and get done with this. I want to introduce these gentlemen here. They are the ones who keep all this stuff working, who put it all together. And they come here every Tuesday and make sure everything's working okay. Before we're out of here today, somebody is going to fix that green signal there probably. But anyway, I'd like for you gentlemen to introduce yourselves starting here. I'm Ruben out of Bakersfield. Robert Butler, Tehachapi. Tom Norman, Tehachapi. Doug Pickard, Tehachapi. Brian Henderson. You live in Bakersfield, don't you? Bakersfield. Dennis Storm, Tehachapi. And these are the guys that they really do. They keep all this stuff working, and uh, we really appreciate it. So the next time you're up here, get old Glory in there too. Next time you're up here and you're looking at all this stuff and one of us is giving you a demonstration of how this works or you notice that something's painted up really nice, these are the guys you have to thank for it. All right, gentlemen, thanks a lot. Everyone appreciates it. All right, well, that will conclude our little uh, run through of how some of this stuff works, everything that I thought was interesting anyway. And uh, um, I had never been in the back of the T2 style semaphore. I was hoping it was a little more interesting than that, but uh, it is what it is. But now we all know what it looks like. All right. I want to again thank all the gentlemen who helped keep this going. I want to thank my friend John McIntyre for explaining some of these things to me. Uh, help me understand. Help me understand. Make me understand how semaphores uh, mechs work because I had no idea. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed that. Um, here are the URLs to my Patreon and my PayPal. If you can help support the channel that way, I'd really appreciate it. Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorport 59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. I'll see you all later.